All right, today we're going to be looking at climatic graphs. Climatic graphs are a skill that all geography students are going to have to be able to do. They're going to have to, they're going to have to be able to construct one and also interpret them. Let's get started. Uh, the first thing we'll look at is a bit of an introduction. Uh, one of the things that I often find students get confused with is the difference between climate and weather. It's important that we realise that weather is our day-to-day -day variations that we experience and climate is the long-term trends that we experience um, uh, you know, over several, several years, 30, 40, 50 years. So a climatic graph is measuring the climate, the averages that we would experience on a long term. So think about that, climate as long term and weather as that day to day. The influences on climate, there are two main influences on climate. The first would be latitude, the closer somewhere is or the further somewhere is from the equator in, and therefore how much and how little sunlight that location gets. And the other one is altitude. If a location is higher up, uh, yeah, or higher up in terms of uh, metres from sea level, then that is also going to be another large influence on the climate. There are other things such as proximity to the ocean um, and other, other things such as wind um, that will influence climate. But the big two are latitude and altitude. Brings us to the point that we're looking at today, and that's a drawing a climatic graph. In order to draw a climatic graph, you're going to need some data, and we usually would look at that as a climatic table. We'll see on the next slide the difference between the two. Okay, if we have a look here, uh, the climatic data is up the top here. This is what we call a cli um, climatic data or a climatic table. You can see it's broken into three areas. There's the letters up the top, and hopefully you can see that they correlate to the months of the year down the bottom and then also temperature in degrees Celsius and precipitation in millimetres. It's going to be the job then of the geography student to be able to graph these two on the climatic graph as well and this here, the one that we're looking at today is of Brisbane and most climatic graphs will tell you the latitude, the longitude and most will tell the altitude uh, just due to copying that's come off there but we know that the altitude of Brisbane is relatively low uh, and, and on sea level, so its altitude's not going to be a huge uh, uh, marker there on, on climate. Let's start with temperature. When we mark temperature, I would always suggest that we use a red uh, it, and we use a blue for, uh, use blue for precipitation. There's a few things that we need to be take into account when we're marking temperature. The temperature is going to be a line graph. There's several ways we can remember this, and we'll go through it at the end of the presentation. But what you have to do is mark on the uh, on the graph the uh, temperature. The temperature is that top one, and it's really important that you mark it properly and mark it in the middle of the month. And I'll make my pen tip a little bit thicker for this one. There we go. And marking it right in the middle of the month. So 25, 25, 23, 21, 18, 16, 15, 16, 18, 21, 23, and 24. Once you've, con once you've done that, it's then the, uh, the job to connect the dots. Which brings you to this point. What do you do with these little end parts here? A lot of students just leave these blank, uh, which is incorrect. You need to go right to the end of the line, but you need to work out, are you just going to go straight, go up or down? And the clue here, because we're looking at climate and we're looking at long term, is to think about what month comes before January. And the answer there would be December. You can see if I'll put in a little D there. And if we think and we look at December, we can see that the month before was 24. So this one at 25 is going to come down slightly. And likewise, at the other end, it's going to go up slightly. So there we go. That's how we mark temperature. Let's move on to precipitation. For precipitation, I'd suggest you use a blue. Uh, just because it's often how it's, uh, how it's done. And we're looking here at 
the lower column. I'll make it a little bit thicker again. When we mark precipitation, we just come over and precipitation is going to be the bar graph. So 167, 161, 144, 88, which is going to be slightly off my it's going to be slightly off my page here, but you get the picture. A student would be using a ruler and rule all of these. On, on this page we'll see my uh, final product. Look, it's by no means a great, uh, great one and because I'm using my finger, uh, the accuracy on the iPad is just, uh, just not quite there. But you get the picture, what you need to do is uh, accurately plot your bar graph and your line graph and then use a ruler for the bar graph and neatly join the lines to get the uh, the line graph sorry neatly join the lines for the, the dots for the line graph and really carefully rule up your bar graph so you end up with something like this the next thing that we need to think about is the interpretation what are you gonna have to do with it and probably the biggest two things that a student is gonna have to do uh, when looking at um, climatic data is for temperatures to look at the range. We talk about temperature range and actually I'll do it in red for temperature. There we go. Range. And when we talk about temperature range we're talking about the highest minus the lowest. So I think in the one we just did the highest temperature was 25 and the lowest was 15. Now, bear with me if that was incorrect, but that would make the temperature range 10 degrees Celsius. Precipitation. Often the thing that you'll have to do for precipitation is um, average uh, annual rainfall, average annual precipitation. Yeah, I'll rub that out. average precipitation. This involves adding every month together. I haven't done the average annual precipitation for the, uh, for the Brisbane one, um, but from looking at it, uh, just thinking it would somewhere be somewhere around the thousand millimetres, I would imagine, and, uh, or, or thereabouts. Okay, some just general tips uh, when we're doing it. A lot of students I find often, uh, you know, sort of struggle and, and draw up the uh, uh, climatic graph and do the bar graph for the temperature and the line graph for precipitation. Here's a tip for you. When we're doing temperature, think about when it's hot, you hang out on the clothesline, you hang out your T-shirts, and so temperature is, uh, when it's hot, you've got a line, your clothes line that you hang out, so that's your line graph. And precipitation. Think about when it rains, if you put a glass outside, it fills up like a bar graph. Look, it's not a particularly scientific method of remembering, but if that helps you remember it, then I guess that's a, that's a good way to do it. Hopefully this has been an instructive uh, uh, video on how to construct a climatic graph. It's a skill that comes up in exams quite a lot. Uh, it's one that comes up in assessments quite a lot. And if you know how to do it, it can be a really easy few marks. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye.